Jesse, congratulations. Welcome to the Chargers. Congrats on winning the national championship, following Jim Harbaugh out here to LA. Why leave Michigan to be this team's defensive coordinator? Uh, number one is Jim Harbaugh. Um, and then it's the opportunity that the Chargers have given me, the Spanos family, Joe Ortiz, coach, uh, just tremendous, tremendously blessed to be here. Uh, great opportunity for my family and I uh, certainly have always had dreams of doing this at, at this level. And uh, so this was the best opportunity to get a chance to continue to work with people that I know and trust and feel comfortable with and uh, look forward to doing it here. So you were with John, you then got with Jim, you worked with Jim the last couple of years, you're back here together. What is maybe something that you learned about him that now you're gonna kind of pair up and bring to this Chargers team? You know, I know like, I know the way he wants to build the team. I know the identity that he's looking for. I know how I can help that with how we want to play defense. And so rather than, I think when I first went to Michigan and he was really, he was established there. Um, so I kind of learned the culture there and learned the identity, but now I know going into it, what we want it to look like and to be on the front end of it and be, be uh, kind of laying that foundation here early, I think it's going to be really fun. Um, it's, it's the ultimate team. I mean, you know, at Michigan, it was the team, the team, the team, but that's, that's how he's always been. And uh, building a team from the inside out, building a team that's tough, that's physical, that can win in a lot of different ways. And uh, so we look forward to doing our part on defense here to bring that success. You guys are both the sons of coaches. What has your dad taught you and maybe influenced how you coach too? Uh, just about everything. You know, I think I think as a young person, you, that's that's really where you learn the ins and the outs of coaching and teaching and, and relationships. Um, and then defensively specifically, he's he was a 40, 40 year defensive coordinator, 30 year, something along those lines. Um, so just just about everything kind of started with what I what I learned from him as a youngster and uh, have tried to, you know, evolve and get better and still still have him around as a resource. Um, so yeah, just just about everything, honestly. What do you pick his brain about now? You know, just just running different things by him, uh, whether it's culturally, teaching, uh, schemes, just every just little details. Um, you know, what do you think the coaches? Do you think they'll pick up on this? Do I think how do I need to teach this concept? Is this too much? Do we have enough? Do we have enough answers? Just just stuff like that. That he's kind of got this big picture look. Uh, his view is is you know, from 30,000 feet, whereas I'm, I'm closer. And so I kind of like that, that he's got this wider, wider lens and, and say, hey, maybe what about this or, or that? So just kind of that big picture view that, that he brings. So in speaking to this defense, how much can Chargers fans maybe expect what they saw at Michigan to now translate here to LA? You know, I think uh, certainly how we play, you know, and, and I talk about 50% being what you play and 50% being how you play. And so what you play is is always evolving. You know, that's gonna be based on who we have, the players that we have, the opponents that we play, all the different quarterbacks that we have to play against. So I think that that evolves year to year, that evolves team to team. But what I really wanna do is build the identity of how we play. And that when you, when you line up to play against us, you kind of know how physical we're gonna be, how tough we're gonna be, how together, we're going to play how much on the same page we're going to be um, and so this this first uh, phase here is really building that identity of the culture of the defense the togetherness the toughness the, the way we want to take on blocks the way we want to attack the ball all those things so i think there'll be uh, hopefully a lot of similarities to, to how we played at michigan over the last year you're going to bring those four pillars of defense over here too? We, we, we got some ideas, um, <laughs> you know, that that was certainly, you know, really specific uh, to what we had there. But however, like things that are important to playing winning defense, block destruction, communication, ball disruption, effort and angles, we've added tackling in as another one. Um, you know, that to me is the how, you know, like how you want to play. So when you turn on the, the Chargers tape or you cut tune us in on a Sunday, you know, I want there to be a level of expectation for the people watching and what they want it to look like. And um, I think if we, we set those standards early, that uh, we'll certainly be able to, you know, live, live on those five things and become really good at those five things. Well, I was gonna say great pillars of defense, also great band names, song names, like you can put an LP together with some of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we have, you know, shocking effort, block disruptions, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right, creativity is something that has come up a lot when you search your name and the defenses that you've coached. Where does that come from? You know, it's, it's trying to create concepts of defense 
uh, that the guys understand conceptually what we're trying to do, whether it's different coverages, different ways to take a receiver out, different ways to disguise, different ways to pressure, and then taking these concepts, trying to create really simple ways to make them maybe look different week to week. And uh, in, in turn, that you know lets the other team or the, the general fan think, wow, like I don't know how they're able to do you know, all the different things that they're able to do. And for our guys, hopefully it's, it's layered in simplicity and it allows them to play really fast uh, because they understand conceptually what we're trying to do. So um, we want to change week to week in a sense of we don't want the other team to know what we're going to be in or know what we're trying to play. I think the disguise and the, and the um, you know, sort of the element of surprise is really important. And so we certainly want to have that. But we want it, you know, for our guys to be like, hey, here's what we're trying to do. Here's looks we're trying to present. Now let's go play really fast and, and play at high speed level. So how do you keep that going with guys where they don't feel so overwhelmed if things are changing? You sort of just keep it simple. I actually read that you said that when it comes to the NFL, it's guys playing with vision and depth. Mm -hmm. So to have that full field view, but not feel overwhelmed by yeah. it. You know, I think when you teach things initially, it's really important how you teach them. So we, we, don't, we don't try to memorize play calls. Like to me, defense isn't about, hey, here's the play call. It's like, what are we trying to get done when we call this particular coverage or we call this front? And then they understand that from a big picture view. And then it's like, okay, that gives you the ability to adapt in game. That gives you the ability to adapt from one week to the next. And, uh, and then you, you know, ultimately you try to take what you do and build it around your most impactful and your best players. And at Michigan, it was different both years of who our, who our guys were. In the NFL, a lot of times, you know, it might be more consistent uh, year to year because of contracts and who you have. And so we want to take what our guys do best, what each particular player does best, and then try to, cr try to be creative in the ways in which we let them do what they do best. So let's talk about one of those guys, Derwin James. What sort of role do you envision for him in this defense? Yeah, I envision Derwin just being an enforcer, being a leader, um, being able to do a lot of different things, but we also want him to, to play really fast. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you get a guy like Derwin, you know, there's these imagination things of, we could do everything with him. And we want to start off saying, hey, let's, let's get him going. Let's get him feeling comfortable. Let's allow him to do the things that he does best, which is, man, get around the ball and make plays. You know, that's, I, I think when I look at his most impactful plays, he's close to the ball. Um, he's pressuring, he's blitzing, he's kind of playing with no fear. He's, he's doing that. So we want to create as many different ways for him to do those things and uh, impact the game for us as much as possible. Is it helpful having a veteran like him knowing that you're implementing a whole new defense, but to have a guy who's been here, seen it, seen a lot to kind of team up with and help some of the younger guys on this group? Yeah, to me, like this is a partnership. You know, I talk about co-creation amongst me, the other coaches, and certainly the players. And so this is all of us together, but you know, you want to pick out early the Derwin James, these leader type of guys that, that you want to, you know, come arm in arm with. And you need him to help me implement the message that we're trying to create, him to kind of t tell me some things of what we can do better, how we can improve here. And uh, so he's been great to partner up with so far. I've already learned a lot from him, about him, um, some things that I feel like we can, we can really get this thing going off on the right foot from the start. So I had read that when you interviewed with Michigan, the focus was how are we going to beat Ohio State? Now in the NFL, it obviously shifts to the NFL, shifts to the AFC, shifts to the AFC West where division rival just won the whole enchilada. So how do you set this defense up to, as you said, beat the team you know you have to beat? Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. So, I mean, it, even now as we're impl like we're putting together our playbook and doing things, it's that's who we're watching. That's who we're looking at. Um, the defense has to be designed to be able to beat them, you know, and to be able to affect Mahomes and be able to cover Kelsey and all the different weapons that they have, uh, Coach Reed. I mean, they so much respect for them, first of all, and how they play, how they operate, the success that they've had uh, three of the last five years, I believe, um, winning the Super Bowl. So this is a great challenge, but, you know, you know who you're chasing, you know who you're gunning for. And um, I think when you have that in mind right from the start, that's how you design everything. And so, you know, we look forward to that challenge. That's why we're here and uh, can't wait for the first opportunity. Awesome, Jesse, welcome in. Congrats. Thank you, appreciate it.